Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Blue Raptor Podcast. I'm your host, JJ Romero. Before we begin, I want to give a big shout out, or better yet, a birthday shout out to Mr. Cruptious on YouTube. A few days ago, it was his birthday. And as a big birthday present to him, I have dedicated this podcast to Mr. Cruptious. In case nobody knows who he is, he is this editor. He, he's a really young editor who uh, makes trailer styles in, and, and puts movies and combines with different music. And, and trust me, he does a really good job with those. So happy birthday, man. Love your videos, man. Hope you subscribe to my channel. So, all right. So let's see. So many things have happened this week. First, we had the Hellboy trailer, the new Men in Black trailer, and as a big surprise, we had the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit appear in, in the PS4. But that's not what this episode is all about. This episode is all about DC's redemption, which includes the Titans, the darker Teen Titans show, which I just finished watching the entire season finale, and I, uh, I got some notes about that. And I saw Aquaman. I just saw Aquaman on Thursday on opening night in IMAX 3D, and holy, holy crap, that movie blew me away. Also, also this audio podcast is rec- is recorded and live streamed on my Instagram, so I could receive questions. But so far, uh, no questions so far. I hope we get this at the very end of my podcast. So let's begin with what happened this week. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Speaking of movies, I told everyone last week I was going to announce the mute, the answer to my Grinch debate. So, after going to some reconsideration, the winner of the the winner of the Grinch debate is the 1966 original Dr. Dar- Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas cartoon. I mean, come on, guys. The original is amazing. Come on. I mean, it's like a timeless Christmas classic everyone can enjoy, no matter what. Right? I mean, sure, the two movies are good. But honestly, the original was good. Although, although to be honest, originally my answer was going to be Jim Carrey's, or or the animated Benedict Cumberbatch. But, uh, well, you know, it was a it was a hard one to debate. All right, so let's get things started with the Hellboy trailer, which just dropped out, which just dropped in a few weeks ago. I mean, sorry, sorry, a few days ago, and. Uh, Honestly, I actually have mixed feelings about it. I'm look. Okay, so here's the thing. Like it's okay cuz you see there's the th- here's the thing. There have been like rumors and it's supposed and people have been saying that this movie is supposed to be like a like a dark and horror vibe to the Hellboy franchise for this film and David Harbour is playing Hellboy. However, when I saw the trailer, it didn't felt dark. It felt more like like an action comedy because you know, it it, it like it was just like a lot more funnier. However, it's just that I just feel like that the that they were just trying too hard to be funny, and when me and my friends saw the trailer, we just thought, you know, like, you know, like what was that all about? Like, really, I didn't find it funny in some parts. I just found it like a little cringy, and honestly, it was hard. It was like literally hard to hear what David Harbour was saying, even under all that makeup. However, I was a little surprised how much he got in shape to play Hellboy. I mean, damn. I'm just saying that's like that is like some dedication right there. But come on, look, nothing can beat the original Hellboy, and that Hellboy is Ron Perlman. I mean, Ron Perlman was actually, in my opinion, the best Hellboy. I mean, he nailed like his acting. But the thing is, in this Hellboy film, like the atmosphere felt a lot different. Because honestly, in my opinion, I grew up watching the Guillermo del Toro. Uh, you know, like films, and trust me, he that guy has a visual style, and that is something I love watching. And you know, like it's just like I mean, come on, guys. I mean, this is this is Guillermo del Toro. He just well, he won an Oscar, you know, for The Shape of Water, and that is something we need to appreciate. So let's see. Even though we talked about Hellboy, what was the other thing I was going to? Oh yeah. Also, the new Men in Black International trailer just dropped just a few days ago. Me and my friend actually saw the trailer. And what's funny, we saw it three times in a row. You know, like, we pressed the repeat button because, honestly, the trailer was amazing. I mean, I just cannot, I just cannot talk about the fact. I mean, because, you know, originally when we heard it was going to be like a, like a spinoff or a reboot, we were thinking, oh, man, no, we're going to miss that. We're going to miss Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. 
But what was interesting about this one is, is that it took place in the same universe as Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. It's just that we're getting some new characters. They're having some references to them. But the best thing about it was seeing Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth back in action since Thor Ragnarok. And I just thought it was pretty cool that they hired um, F. Gary Gray, the director of The Fate of the Furious, and Straight Outta Compton to direct this movie. And the way I see in this visual style, I thought it looked amazing and incredible. And this was like something... Oh, oh man, I would totally see. I mean, the action sequences, the, the way they use the music, the cars, the weapons, everything about it just blew me away. It was like unexpected to see and we like 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 I said we were we were blown away by this trailer and you know well I mean well, well this is like a teaser trailer wait oh hold on a second wait uh, hold on I'm getting word it was an official trailer like you know the very first official trailer not a teaser so from what I've seen I thought it looks cool however however there's still I'm I have a feeling they're still working on the visual effects for the aliens because I feel like some of the visual effects woo, a little off just a little and but i'm just hoping that that a few more months would pass by and they would fix that effect but you know no pressure and and in other news in the gaming industry spider-man ps4 they just update they had this new update and they released the sam raimi spider-man suit i mean oh my god the details on that suit was amazing and it brought back so many childhood memories I thought it was like the greatest thing to ever happen, you know, in the in the video game series. And you know, actually, it was actually a bit of a funny story about how I discovered the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit that I have entered the game. It was actually a pretty funny story. Uh, so what happened is that on the day we went to go see Aquaman. In the very morning, I woke up early just to you know, like just to play, but I had to lower the volume. But I had a hard time trying to find the remote. So, so long story short. When I opened up the PS4, it said it was getting an update on the Spider-Man game. I looked a bit confused, and I thought, what's going on? Is it some graphic update? So, after the update, I was playing the game on my profile my friend created. My profile. And when I was playing it, because I wanted to get a new suit, so when I activated the suit button, it said, you got, it said, new. So, I pressed new, and then all of a sudden, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man suit was there, and... Oh my gosh, you should have seen my reaction. I was like, holy sh**. Like, literally, like, just playing that. And then I ran to my friend's room, who was still asleep. I woke him up like, like a little child. And then I said, and I said, David, David, you're not going to believe it. He woke up. So when he got out of bed and put on his shirt, when he went to the, when he went to the living room, his eyes wide open. He looked at the screen and he was like, he was like, holy sh**. The mother did it. The mother did it. And I quote, that's what I quote from him. That's literally what he said. That that was his real reaction. So what happened is that after that, my friend ended up starting the game all over, but in new game plus mode. So when he, so he wanted to try out the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit, and then all of a sudden we were quoting some of his fame, some of his uh famous lines from the movie. You know, like "I'm back" or the pizza time from Spider-Man Two. Honestly, like seeing that, I actually thought that was actually the coolest thing that ever happened that day. So, getting Sam Raimi's Spider Man suit in the game was actually the coolest thing to ever happen. And I will say, Insomniac, you sons of, <laughs> you guys actually pulled it off. Like, you guys actually did. Congratulations. All right, so enough of Sam Raimi's Spider Man. Let's get to the real reason why you're here in this podcast. DC's Redemption. You guys want to know how did DC redeem themselves with that darker Teen Titans show, which I'm going to talk about because honestly, I actually have some reviews on that. And I'm going to give you guys my my spoiler free review on Aquaman and how this movie redeemed DC. All right, let's get things started with the Titans show, shall we? So here's the thing. I grew up watching the original Teen Titans. And those that that show was like my childhood show. I loved watching the action sequences, the storyline, the dramatic, the coloring, everything about that show was amazing. So I saw that darker Teen Titans show, and honestly, it wasn't that bad. I mean, the performances in the show were amazing. 
And, uh, I mean, some of the action sequences were awesome and really gory. However, I had tons of issues with the show. Like, I know this is like the one show they want to kick off the DC Universe app. But I had so many issues with this, with this, with this TV show. Because, one, like, I'm just tired of the inconsistency. And what I mean by that is that, because look, in the original Teen Titans, each season tells a, a, st- a story arc for, for a specific character. Like there was this one season where the story is all about Raven dealing with Trigon, or Robin's issues with uh, Slay, or but he had Cyborg's, uh, you know, storyline with the Brotherhood of Evil. See what I mean? But this this show was so confused. Like Like, in a way, they're trying to combine different elements of different character story arcs into one season and it's so confusing and there were some like character elements and 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 and, and antagonists that were just so confusing like i can't tell like whose cult was this or whose cult was that or better yet like i don't even know what they were up against so because here's the thing the more you watch the show the more you'll start to realize wait a minute this story isn't about raven this story is about Robin, like mostly Robin, because trust me, that guy has issues. I know in the original Teen Titans he had issues, but come on, even in this one he still had issues. But this is all about him being a murderer, just like Batman. Yeah, that's right, you hear me, Batman murders in this one. So, so here's the thing: I saw the season finale, like finally today on Friday. And honestly, I was really disappointed with the ending. Like, I did not like the way it ended. It ended with, like, okay, so think of it this way. The season finale was, like, some kind of hallucination sequence where Robin must decide what kind of life he wanted. Either he could have the life of a family, which I thought that was a nice one, or he could have the life of finishing what he started, which is technically, and, uh, spoiler alert, so, oh, by the way, if I were you, I skipped 10 seconds of this. Killing Batman. Three, two, one. There, I said it. I said the spoiler, just in case. So, yeah, I mean, I was a little mad about that. But what was surprising, though, was the post credit scene, which did happen right after the show, which, to be honest, I actually thought it was pretty cool. However, I will not say it because I know there's some people out there who are still watching it. I mean... Overall, like I said, this is just one season. They only have one season, and I'm hoping that they're going to do another season in the next uh, next year. However, I want to talk about the big movie I just recently saw. I saw Aquaman in IMAX 3D on opening night, and holy crap. Like, here's the thing. Some people had some high, high expectations. Some people thought, oh, this might fail. No, this movie actually met its expectations, and I was stunned and blown away. And this movie just whoo blew me away. I, I was shocked by how this movie turned out. Like the the visual, I mean, the visual storytelling, the direction by James Wan. I mean, James Wan's direction really knows what he know he knows what he's doing. The cinematography was somehow unique in this movie, but the and the performance by Jason Momoa, Amber Heard, and Nicole Kidman, I thought they were all they all did well, including Patrick Wilson. <coughs> but the show stealer of this movie was the visual effects. I mean, holy moly. Even watching the movie in IMAX 3D, the visual effects were like just visually stunning. They were beautiful, they were amazing. And and honestly, like after watching it. It makes me think that this movie could actually have a big runner-up for the Oscars for Best Visual Effects. Because even after watching the movie, me and my friend debated. And you know what we thought? We thought... (coughs) See, we thought, oh man, sorry Marvel, but we gotta give the award to Aquaman. This movie, I mean, the visual effects blow me away. And there were like times in the movie where I really wanted to shit myself, you know, metaphorically, from excitement. Because you just get this... This, this energy feeling inside you that's like, yes, I really want to see it so bad. And and this movie gives you all of that. <clears throat> People wanted to know my criticism. Honestly, I did have I did have two criticisms. Just two. I have two. I mean, to be honest, some of the dialogue just didn't fit or some of them were, like, overused. I don't know. Because, honestly, I know 
they wanted to do like this campy adventurous tone but like i said i mean there was just some few dialogues i feel like they could change up soundtrack was a little weird just saying the soundtrack was a little weird um oh yeah and Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna save this. Uh, I'm not gonna say this uh, criticism because honestly, that could go into spoiler territory. So uh, I guess you just need to watch the movie for yourself. But let's just say they used a certain character for a minimal amount of time, and we all feel like we could watch more. <coughs> but however, both of these, like both of these DC products, in a way, redeem DC for what it is for storytelling. But the show stealer was Aquaman because they actually stick to the comics and they met the fans' expectations. Which, like, after watching it, my heart burst thinking, like, holy crap, I really want to see this movie again. And I was uh, stunned by how Aquaman turned out. And, like, me personally, I feel like I actually want to watch the movie again. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I literally feel like I want to watch the movie again. That's how good it is. So. That's all for today, but before, but before I sign off, let's answer the fans' question. Now let's see what we got. Ah, we have three. We have a couple questions by Hunter R Hudson on Instagram. Thank you so much. Let's see. The first question is top ten favorite movies of the year. Ooh, oh boy. All right. So top ten favorite movies of the year. Let's see. Well, to be honest, most of them were animated, but uh, okay. So let's see. Uh. Because I saw Aquaman, I'm probably gonna add Aquaman as the as ten. I'm gonna name the top ten favorite and movies of the year. So let's see. My no <coughs> let's see. My number ten was Aquaman. My number nine was uh, what was it? Let's see. Number nine is probably Ant Man and the Wasp. Number eight is the Teen Titans Go. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just this movie was actually pretty funny. Like it, it, it you know, because honestly, I thought oh, it was gonna suck, but it actually turned out well. Let's see, seven. Oh wait, seven. Sorry, uh, seven. Um, hmm, a little hard, but I'm gonna say Wreck It Ralph. Uh, Wreck It Ralph. Uh. Two, Ralph Breaks the Internet. I liked it. I thought it was a very cute story. Very nice visuals. Number six, Isle of Dogs. I thought I thought that movie was visually appealing with Wes Anderson. Thank you, man. Thank you. Good job. Number five, uh, Avengers Infinity War. I because I know a lot of people are probably gonna be asking me like, why didn't I just make that number one? Uh, because I had well, I loved it, but there were like other movies that were great. Number four, Incredibles 2. Oh, man, waiting 14 years, and it was worth it. Number three, I would say Spider- Number three, I would say Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I haven't seen it yet, but I know it's going to be my new favorite because of the visual style. Number two, Black Panther. I mean, come on, guys. That movie was visually appealing. It had a really good direction. You know what? I don't want to say this to, because I've done this argument before with my haters, and honestly, it was a little annoying. But look, it was a good movie. But my number one favorite movie of the year, A Star is Born, directed by Bradley Cooper. That movie was amazing, phenomenal, made me cry. I cried so much in this movie. I really did. I cried so much in this movie. Oh, man. And Lady Gaga, I want her to win an Oscar for her Best Actress. That's all I want. All right, let's see another question. Oh, yeah, by the way, so there you go. Those are my top 10 favorite movies of the year. Honestly, I just wish I would have write that down, though, because it was, it was going to be kind of confusing because I kind of forgot it. Let's see, top five favorite female directors. Oh, uh, okay, that's the thing. I don't know that much. Uh, hmm. I will say I do like Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman. I thought she did a really good job with that one. Uh, let's see, Greta Gerwig for, uh, Lady Bird, I, I, th I thought she did, I thought she did a good job with that one, uh, let's see, top five, honestly, I can only think of, you know, three, 
I can only think of three. Because the question says top five favorite female directors. I can only think of three. Oh, and uh, Jennifer Lee. In case nobody knows who she is, she directed Frozen. And uh, is producing some more Disney movies. I mean, come on. I mean, she became the first female director for an animated movie at Disney. And honestly, I thought she did well in the movie. I just thought she did well. Let's see. Next question. Favorite indie films. Oh. Ooh, favorite indie films. Uh, let's see. My favorite indie film is, uh, ooh. I wonder if The Shape of Water counts, because, I mean, it is made by Fox Searchlight. So, I will say, let's see, The Shape of Water, The, uh, The Disaster Artist. I like that one. Isle of Dogs. Hmm. I don't know, I'm not sure. It's just I'm not that much of an indie film fan. I, I mean, I'm not a fan, but I, I appreciated them. Uh, I enjoyed Moonlight, but uh, it's not my favorite. Uh, okay, so I'm okay. So basically, my top three are Isle of Dogs, The Shape of Water, and uh, The Disaster Artist. Basically, that's my top three. Next question. This is a one by my friend. He says, "Are you excited?" Are you excited for Philia? It's a it's a short film one of my friends is making, and oh, that I would like to see. Yes, like that I would like to see. Yes, I would like to see Ophelia, dude. I I will give you a big shout out on your film, dude. I actually can't wait. Wait, what the hey? Hunter dot or the Hunter Black Panthers and get come on, dude. Ninety seven percent on Ron Tomato. Do I have to? Hey, you know, hey, by the way, everyone who is hearing this, trust me, guys, when Black Panther came out, I had to go through a lot of harassing and bullying just because I was the only one in school that liked Black Panther. And trust me, it's very annoying. I just, look, guys, I don't want to go through it. Let's see. And, uh, wait, Sofia Coppola. Uh, okay, I know who she is, but I... All of the is the only movie I've seen with her was just Lost in Translation. That's just the only movie I've seen. All right. So, uh, hmm. Well, I guess that's it for today. I answered all the questions. I've gone to my audio podcast. All right, guys. So before I, so remember, guys, like, share, subscribe to my channel, and I uh, hope you guys like my video. So follow me on Instagram. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and it's all in the description below. So, so anyway, so, alright everybody, so, this is JJ signing off.